This is the so-called tombstone ad from the first global bond, and you can see it's $1.5 billion, eight and three-eighths percent, okay, for a 10-year deal. It was, it was viewed as a big deal. <laughs> It surprises me when I think about the fact that I ended up working at the World Bank because I had gone to school in suburban St. Louis in a part of the country where my family had, had been for 150 years, roughly. My dad was a lawyer, so I knew a little bit about how the profession worked. So I ended up going to law school in D.C. And one thing led to another. When I became treasurer, um, I came to the job from the deputy treasurer position. So it was in some respects a go-to place for people who had interesting ideas. I think as an innovator, it had continued to have that, um, you know, play that role during that period. And of course the crisis changed a lot of this because, because of the um, the bank then ultimately having to step up and, pr and produce a lot of crisis-related finance for its clients. Already, the World Bank estimates, high food and fuel prices have driven 100 million people into poverty. So, to help protect the poorest and minimize cuts in government investments in basic services like education, the World Bank is tripling its lending to developing countries from 13 billion U.S. dollars to 35 billion this year. It's actually a, absolutely fascinating how it was that the bank came through this so well. For one thing, obviously we had extremely conservative um, policies with respect to the investment of liquid assets and that was a good starting point. Unlike so many people in the financial sector, the incentive structure under which our team operated did not encourage aggressive risk taking right up to, to keep on taking aggressive risk as some of these troublesome um, events began to unfold. A group of Scandinavian pension funds approached the World Bank in 2008 looking for financial instruments that supported green projects. There was clearly a demand out there that was not being met and the World Bank launched its green bonds program in response. What was behind the green bonds is I get asked this question quite frequently. If you, if you think about the situation that a lot of these, a lot of investors found themselves in during that during the crisis period. Where will they want to put their investments? They're gonna to wanna to put it in AAA rated, you know, high grade paper. And then on top of that, if you can demonstrate to them that you're gonna, you're gonna have the, the safety associated with those liquid high grade instruments, and on top of that, you have the emerging green character of specific transactions, the green bonds. If you look at what's happened over the 70 years from the time of that first bond deal, the capital structure that emerged from Bretton Woods um, is one of the most efficient uses of public credit that anybody has devised. How can we make even more use of this, um, of this very efficient financing mechanism in more broadly in what people describe as global public goods like the climate, um, like climate change mitigation and adaptation and all of that. People need to take ideas that you're not sure about and try them. Everybody takes, now takes the global bond for granted, but that was hugely controversial at the time um, because of the, of the changes in, in nitty gritty stuff like clearing and settlement that you needed to implement to make that work. Um, and the fact that Wall Street was concerned about its margins. <laughs> the key thing in Treasury is to, is to um, license the people on the teams in Treasury to think outside the box and to bring forward 
the, the new ideas with the understanding that, that there are going to be many of them that aren't going to work, but the ones that do can have a huge impact.